right, hello. So this is a bit of a strange video because it's not going to make a big difference to our renderer at the moment, but I just wanted to talk about this when it, you know, naturally comes up. And that is the issue of buffer sub allocation. So currently when we make that quad, we've got an index buffer and a vertex buffer, and they are two separate memory allocations. But generally the GPU prefers a smaller number of large allocations to the extent that we can actually allocate all of this data on a single buffer, use offsets within that buffer to get our vertex and index buffers under one allocation. But even before I get to that, I just want to quickly talk about something. And that is a, an edit that I'm going to make to this. So see how these libraries have these like crosses next to them. This cross indicates that the library is not, Cargo is not using the most recent version. It indicates the most recent version here. I mistakenly made the assumption that this star was a, a note to use the most recent version. It's actually not. It's just an indicator to use some supported version, which seems to be random. Anyway, so I'm just quickly going to go ahead and update this. And the reason this is worth talking about in the, a video is that it will introduce some new modifications that I need to make. Okay, cool. So I've just updated these versions and under the hood, Cargo's done a bunch of checks and now we can see we've got a bunch of errors. Most of it seems to be in this pipeline. So let's jump in and have a look at any updates that we need to make or specifically updates that I need to make. Okay, so to start with, we've got this entry point. This is a string which indicates the name of the function. But it says here that this has changed from a string to an optional string. And so I'll need to specify that this is an optional string. Then furthermore, it says we need some compilation options. So I'll just pop down here and specify compilation options. And that's WGPU pipeline compilation options. And I'm not going to do this. Luckily, there is a default. So I'm going to need to do the same thing here for the fragment shader. So again, we'll put in an, an, oops, an optional reference to a string and then some compilation options. Now, if we go outside, the next thing is we need a cache, basically a pipeline cache. But this, um, if I remember correctly, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, if I remember correctly, we do not need like a cache is, is optional and I'm not recreating this from another pipeline. So we'll just put in none and that has fixed that issue. Uh, but if we go back, we've got one more issue, which is, I think it's in the device creation. Yeah. Device descriptor. It says we need to specify memory hints. So put in WGPU memory hints. And then the options here are we can explicitly state some hints or we can prefer memory usage or performance. And I'm going to favor performance in this case, but now everything should be working and we can verify that by running it. And because I went ahead and changed the version, now it is going to go and recompile all this stuff. That's totally fine. Just take a second. And there we have it. As you can see, it's working. Okay. So onto the stuff that I actually want to do, I'll just go over to my mesh builder. And now, like I said, instead of having two individual buffers, I'm just going to have a single buffer and I'm also going to have an offset. So if we were to visualize the buffer, it would be partitioned into two regions. 
The first region would go from zero up to offset and it would hold all the vertex data or it would go from zero up to offset minus one. You know what I'm saying? Then the next region would go from offset off to the end and that would hold the index data. So I'm just going to go down to the section where I make the quad and I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to define all this data sort of next to each other and then I'm going to have a few different slices. So I'll have bytes one, that will be the vertex data. And then bytes two, that will be the index data. And then I'll make another variable, which will be both of these merged together. So I have bytes merged merged. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get uh, bytes one, and bytes two, and I'll concatenate them. And then I'll just need to get a reference to that. So then we'll go to the buffer descriptor. And I'm just going to re relabel this. Uh, and then the contents will be bytes merged and then for the usage this will be both vertex and index okay so now we've created that single buffer the other thing we need is the offset so to get the offset I'll simply get the number of elements, the length of, hmm, come on. Yeah, the length of bytes one. Yeah, that'd be the byte offset of the vertex buffer. So then I'll go ahead and construct that uh, mesh and return it. So that's all working. Let's go and actually use this thing so it's surprisingly straightforward. We've gone ahead, we've created this uh, mesh and we're gonna need to change the render function. So in the render function, here we've got uh, set vertex buffer. Now this current slice is gonna get everything. Uh, first up, this should be buffer. But the cool thing about a slice is we can set the bounds manually. So I'm going to start at byte zero and I'm going to go up to the offset. Okay. And then for the index buffer, I'm going to go from the offset and if I put nothing there that will go up to the end of the buffer but yeah like I said not super satisfying because we're just tweaking some things to have the same result but fingers crossed we'll at least get the same result so yeah we go ahead and build it and we can see the same stuff so it's worked properly that's good to see in the next video I'm going to be having a look at putting in some transformation matrices so we can actually get these things moving. But yeah, that will be it for now. All the best and have fun. Bye.